in worship, in our times of worship, the Spirit of God can speak the heart and mind of God to our hearts. And what the prophetic word does, the prophetic song does as well. And as a congregation, we can declare, we can sing the heart and mind of God over our situations. And, and God wants to do that in the here, in the now. We see that music and worship go together, right? We looked at that Hebrew word, zamar, which talks about how we can play an instrument musically to God in an act of worship. We also see that there is a very close link between music and the prophetic. Nowhere is it so clearly, you know, the whole thing of music and worship and the prophetic, all these three elements coming together we see in the tabernacle of David. So what he does is he institutes a form of worship. He puts the ark there, he appoints certain people to play music, to sing songs of worship because the ark, he knew there was something about the ark because it represented the presence of God. He said, I want this. I want to engage with the presence of God. But the interesting thing is this. You know, time and again, we see that they played music and they prophesied which means they were declaring the heart and mind of God. Prophecy is just God speaking to man through man. What does the prophetic word do? 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3 says that the prophetic word brings edification. It builds us up. There's spiritual progress. It brings edification. It brings encouragement, exhortation. We are encouraged and it brings comfort. The, the, the interesting thing is that the prophetic can be released in song. And... Um, the way it starts, it could be a very spontaneous song. A song for which you did not know the words. For a song for which the lyrics are not there on the screen. A spontaneous song. A song that is just coming out of the overflow of our heart. Prophetic songs could be for people. Prophetic songs, again, could be to the powers of darkness, to nations. We declare it. And the prophetic song accomplishes all that the prophetic word accomplishes. Well, the interesting thing is this that worship is even bigger than that. I'm not contradicting myself. Prophetic has its place. Sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving has its place, right? Revering God, recognition of God, yes, we need to do that. But worship is much bigger than that. And scripture says in 2 Corinthians 9 and um, verse, verse 6 onwards, we read that God loves a cheerful giver, the one who gives bountifully, the one who, through whom that God's name is glorified. So God is calling us to a life of worship that's a life of kindness and generosity. Secondly, we see uh, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and two, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. So kindness and, uh, and generosity a sacrifice well-pleasing to God. Here it says, you present your body holy, acceptable to God, pure, blameless, separate from sin. You present your body. And lastly, you know, when we look at worship songs, when we sing these songs, these are songs of love. These are songs of adoration to God. We sing, God, I love you with all my heart, with everything within me. In fact, that is what the Lord wants us to come to a place of, to a place of loving him with everything. And that's worship. That's adoration. The Lord says, love the Lord with all your heart, everything within you. The Lord also says in John chapter 14 and verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He says, if you love me, obey. Verse 21 of that same chapter, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And Samuel makes the statement, prophet Samuel makes the same statement. He says, uh, 1 Samuel 15 and verse 22. So Samuel said, has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Sacrifice, obedience, you know, both, yes, the Lord wants that. He's saying he esteems obedience. So the Lord is saying obedience. When we say, when we obey, we love God. When we obey, we actually worship him. So the Lord is actually inviting us God is inviting us to a, a life of kindness and generosity, a life of holiness, consecration, a life of obedience to him, because that truly is a life of worship.